Right now, this is just a broken surfboard that I got for free, but it's only broken at one tip and I've got all this real estate to make something out of. And to me, this just screams shield. First off, I wiped the whole surfboard down just to make sure that it was clean, but there's still a lot of wax on here. So I tried pouring hot water on a paper towel like I saw in a video for cleaning wax off surfboards and it didn't work so well for me. I don't know, maybe because my wax was really thick or whatever, but in the end, I just grabbed a scraper and that was a way easier way to get rid of the bulk of the wax on the surface. And I mean, I probably wouldn't want to do this if this was like a nice surfboard, but since I'm going to be covering the surface anyway, I don't care if I scratched it a little bit, but it seemed to work pretty okay. Got tons of wax off that way. There was still a good bit of residue though. So for that, I grabbed my heat gun and I was trying to be careful not to overheat the plastic, just get the wax warm enough to wipe it off with the paper towel. This again worked okay. Probably not something you'd want to do if it was your actual surfboard, but again, for my purposes, I don't care if I damage the surface a little bit. Next up, I went ahead and just traced out from some reference pictures the basic shape for the shield, because I wanted to check and make sure that this was even gonna fit on the surfboard before I got too far in this project. So I printed it out at life size, just half of it, and then just cut that out so I could lay down on the surfboard. I did end up cutting the second half out of a big piece of kind of cardboard paper-ish type thing that I had lying around so that I would have a whole, uh, a whole pattern to lay across. And then of course it needs to be centered. So I pretty much was just referencing the decals since I figured they had probably already found the center line. Although one of the decals was a little crooked so I didn't use that one as a reference. I taped it all down uh, with kind of like the smallest possible pieces of tape so that they wouldn't block where I was trying to sketch out this line. And I used a Sharpie just to trace around all of the edges, trying to get it as kind of symmetrical as possible, even though my pattern kept wanting to shift around. I had to kind of try at it a couple of times. The first time it was a little bit not quite even, and then I ended up just kind of adding some side lines to make sure that I could tell which was the correct line. It was getting pretty confusing by that point. I cut this out with a just a standard cutoff wheel uh, using, on, on my Dremel and it worked fine. I was wearing my face shield because I was afraid it was going to throw plastic up in my face, which actually probably the more dangerous part was the couple times that the cutting wheel broke <laughs> those shards. I wouldn't want flying in my face, but anyways, for the face shield, so that was all good. And then I was able to peel this piece off of the foam backing. It was not as stiff of a plastic as I was expecting. I guess I just kind of thought it'd be more, a little more rigid, but this is quite pliable really, which is probably good because that way it peeled off without cracking. So no worries there. So now that I knew that I had a piece of surfboard that was going to work, I spent the time tracing out all of those details. And again, I just used a reference picture and got it situated as well as I could and then just printed out the full size pattern with both sides this time since it isn't quite symmetrical. I've taped together all those individual sheets to make this one master template. Before I start cutting this into the parts to create the detail pieces, I'm gonna use this to finalize the shape of my surfboard piece. I found that I can actually just cut this with scissors now that it's separated from the main piece of the board and from that thick foam. So I've taped this down, I already trimmed all those edges. I have one last edge. And if it needs a little more fine tuning, that I can do with a sanding barrel. But this automatically, just right off the bat, gets me a cleaner edge than using the cutting wheel. So that's nice. And I was thinking about using the strips of plastic to do some of the detailing, but in the end, the foam is gonna be a lot easier to work with because it does bend sideways, whereas this, you know, really you can only bend it like this. So it's gonna be, everything would have to be cut out perfectly to size. It's just gonna be a lot more of a pain. I don't think it's worth it. So I'm gonna stick with my original plan, which is the foam, and we'll see how that works. Just gotta get this last edge cut. It's a little bit hard on the hand for sure, but pretty fast. My shape is finalized now other than just some of these slightly wonky edges that I'm gonna clean up with the Dremel later on. But this center portion here, this kind of teardrop shape, it is supposed to be 
raised. So I printed out this kind of crazy looking raised thing, which I think might have a little bit too much projection there. And also, <laughs> yeah, that just came out beautifully. It was a little bit too skinny for how it was printing. So it just kind of came out as a blob, but that's fine. I'm just gonna cut off those parts and these still need to be glued together to make a single piece. But it does fit in with the pattern there, of course, because I used the SVG file to rotate and revolve around and make this piece. So I've got to just figure out how far out this needs to protrude and what I can cut away to make it fit that better. So I'm going to need the rest of the surfboard for molding this finished piece against because it's kind of buckling a little bit and it's too um, bendable. So eventually I'm going to be using this as the backing board for the main um, for the main shield. So I just cut off the ends to make this a little easier to work with. It was kind of interesting looking inside. You can see the dense foam that they use, the little support structures. I don't know, I just found that kind of interesting. The next thing I need to do with this though is to kind of hollow out the foam in the areas uh, where there's the cutouts in the shield because eventually those parts of the shield are going to have um, like a piece that kind of goes backward at an angle so I'm going to need a place for those to sit in while the rest of the shield is pressed up against the backing board of the foam. So I trimmed away the plastic in there and then just started carving into it. It's kind of fun carving into this foam, it's pretty nice. Uh, a bit of a challenge, it's quite sturdy stuff, so I grabbed a chisel too to kind of help mine all that out. So that will attach in here. I'll need to carve out this foam more, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now so I can get the exact size once these pieces are attached. It's all a little bit kind of bubbled up right now. So it's definitely deformed and needs to be shaped back into the right curve. So that's what this is gonna be for. This is just going to be um, the solid curved surface that it can be pressed up against to solidify the final shape for the shield. I think this needs to be trimmed down a bit, but I'm gonna first check kind of how this fits with the curve, because I did just eyeball this, because I knew I could trim it later if I needed to. Seems pretty okay. Not quite enough of a curve in this direction. Needs to go more like that to press against it. So I need to cut off a bit more of this, which is fine, it's a little too tall anyways. This was too tall to print in one piece, plus it just wouldn't be very smart to print it that way with these kind of curved ends. So to stick them together, I just sanded away some of the material at a beveled edge on each of the pieces so that I'd have a little bit of a space to add some melted plastic using the 3D pen. Just melt that into the groove and that sticks it together really, really well. And then I just sanded away any extra on the outside. I don't care about the back because that's not going to show at this point. Because the piece was slightly too big, I used tape to mark off a cut line that's going to hopefully fit better with the shape of the, or the curve of the surfboard also, and just make it kind of sit a little bit further back. It was protruding too much. So I used that same cutoff wheel to trim away the edge. This plastic's a lot more thick and sturdy. It's about 2.4 millimeters thick. So this did take a while to cut through all the edges. It would have been better to get it right the first time, but I wasn't really sure how big it needed to be at that point. This was also the time to trim away that crazy looking melted tip. I 
and that does seem to fit much better. It's pretty much flush against the curve of the foam now. Because there's still some wax left and I wanna have the glue stick as well as possible, I sanded over the whole surface of the surfboard shield portion. The next step is to go ahead and start cutting out all of these mini details. I cut out just the one set of patterns here. So I'm just cutting out an individual piece and, and cutting that out from the foam, then taping it back into the pattern so that I can cut out the other pieces that were overlapping with that part without having to print out this pattern a bunch of times. And always with foam, it's important to make sure your knife is plenty sharp. So I've got my sharpener nearby and giving that a sharpen up every few cuts. Some of the parts are so thin that I found it easier to cut the outside, then trim out the inside and cut that out also. But as long as you tape it down, it's not too bad. You just have to pay attention to make sure it's not shifting around as you're cutting. Anywhere that it did shift somewhat, I used scissors to trim away any uneven edges and just make sure everything is smoothly curved where it needs to be. With that bit of the pattern taped back in, I can now start cutting out one of the pieces that was overlapping it. And it's quite a long process to do it this way, cutting out all the pieces by hand. Some of the parts are symmetrical, actually most of them really, but there are a few that are unique to each side of the shield. And a couple times I uh, missed which ones were uh, supposed to be cut out as two separate pieces and I just cut out the reverse of the same one, had to fix that later. So it's just minor differences for the most part but it does affect how they fit together with the details on that center 3D printed portion being asymmetrical. The pieces beside it, for example, don't fit together quite properly if they're not cut out as they're supposed to be in the reference material. So you just gotta pay attention, work carefully here, and it just is a very long process. I'm working on assembling these individual parts and putting them together according to the template because they're just everywhere at this point and I can't even get them positioned properly on the actual piece of plastic until I have them positioned in relation to each other. So I'm laying them out directly on the template. Now this area here was a little bit complicated because some of the pieces, even though this is supposed to be all one piece, it overlaps itself. So in cases like that, I just trace that portion, cut it out separately, and now I need to glue them together. I'm using hot glue because it's just going to be too difficult to try to do this with contact cement, even though that's the better option for gluing foam. In this case, I think that the hot glue is going to work better so that I can do it one thing inside without ventilation, so I can work on my work table with the template. And also it's just, it's so much faster for all these individual parts and kind of neater in a way too, because I don't have to have all these little pieces that have a little glue on them trying to dry and sticking to each other by mistake. So I think that's gonna work fine for this. I'm just gonna reinforce it at the back a little bit. Obviously I wanna make sure it doesn't get stuck to the template because this is gonna get glued onto the plastic sheet once it's all laid out. While I was cutting out all of these pieces. Anything that was an outer piece, I just added a little bit, maybe two millimeters or so, just so I have a little bit to work with if it doesn't quite fit on uh, the plastic cutout, since that's cut by hand. So there's some tolerance there, but anything that's internal, it's cut out uh, more precisely so that they will fit the template and then we'll just trim the edge along with the plastic at the very end to make sure that those edges all do line up how they need to. Double check my template. I know that these two points overlap that base piece. I'll be able to pick this up as a unit instead of trying to place individual pieces onto my plastic base. Cool. 
And I've just got to do the same thing for all the rest of the pieces up here. Double check my reference, make sure everything overlaps properly, glue parts together that had to be cut as multiple pieces, and then establish all of the important relationships between the different parts so that this will be able to, uh, that I, so I can pick this up as one piece, lay it on my plastic part, and then do the final attaching to that. I need to make the center detail that goes at the top of the shield. So I'm gonna try making this out of foam clay. So I'm working on a more in-depth review of this, but I just wanna see if this might be a good option for um, this type of detailing also. Um, I could make it out of foam, just carve it out, but this might be a more direct way of doing it. We'll see. The sample was sent to me by Academy Cosplay to test out and do a review. So this is one of the ways I'm going to test it out. I've got my reference picture here on my phone. And so it's this piece I'm doing that has sort of, it kind of looks like it was made out of leather is the type of look it looks to me. I mean, obviously it wouldn't have been made of leather, but the way that it's kind of folded looking to me, that's the effect. So I want to go ahead and imitate that. I've taped my printed pattern just to this piece of cardboard so that I can model directly on top of it. And then I will adhere the shapes to this piece of foam to just to give it a solid base. I'm having some trouble working with this foam clay. For one thing, it does start to dry as you're working with it and it gets harder and harder to get it to form into a shape without kind of getting an uneven kind of crackly surface pattern, even using some water to smooth it. Also, it's just difficult to get any sort of geometric sort of line as opposed to a more organic curve. It's great at the organic curves, but the edges that are supposed to be kind of more defined or any kind of the details here that need to be recessed in, it's really difficult to get um, a crisp line for me anyways. Um, I got it as smooth as I could in some areas, but once it starts to dry a little bit, like the cracks at the top there, couldn't get that out and I just kept deforming it trying to make it smoother. So wasn't super happy with this. I grabbed a piece of floor mat foam and just carved this out with my Dremel. To me, it's a lot easier to get those crisp details this way than with trying to use the foam clay because it is just so marshmallowy. So I was happier with the EVA foam version and I could go in and clean up the uh, foam clay with the Dremel, but that sort of defeats the purpose of doing it with foam clay in the first place to me. So I've got a few final parts to cut for this. I need the center sort of stem that goes up the length or from top to bottom. And that's supposed to be kind of at a triangle or curved shape. So I cut it and then I just change the shape a little bit with the Dremel. And then there's also sort of a stem at the top that I cut out of the, the craft foam again. I also removed the center portion uh, off of the surfboard piece. That's where the 3D printed part is gonna glue on top. And from the reference pictures that is cut out there. So that'll just kinda be more realistic if you look at it from the back. So I added in these final pieces and started gluing everything to the actual surfboard. Kept my reference picture on hand because there are just specific ways that these things all overlap and I wanted to make sure that they were glued down properly the first time. Next up, I'm still going to need to add those side pieces that go in the cutouts. So I'm going to use EVA foam for that. And then once those are on, I can just cover this whole thing in fiberglass. I'm going to see if I can just vacuum bag this whole thing with the fiberglass and resin on there so that hopefully this will press against that foam backing and retain its shape better that way. And also just cover all these details in one even layer so that it looks like it's 
carved from one piece instead of a bunch of different types of materials stuck together. So that's where I'll be picking up in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.